<clears throat> Hello. What I thought I'd do in today's tutorial is continue the terminal stuff that I started yesterday. So I'm going to create a terminal which can be used to unlock a door. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my door somewhere in the world. Now I'm just going to put a door completely out in the open, but I would not advise doing that. I'd advise, uh, you know, having a door in mind to open. Okay, I'm back and I found a suitable door to use for the tutorial. So I'm going to use this door, just because it's one that does, it's got, you know, proper front and back. It's a proper door that can just exist kind of independently, so that's why I've chosen it. And I'm just going to put it, like, literally floating in the middle of the world. So I'm going to double click on it now, and I'm going to give it a reference ID, so I'll just call it our door ref. And now we're going to want to, we make, want to make sure there's no teleport data, because this isn't going to be a teleporting door. It's just going to be a locked door. So I'm going to check lock, and down here you'll see all the different levels of lock. And we're going to want to go for requires terminal for this, and we don't want a key, because that would be mean you could unlock it another way other than a terminal. And we're just going to hit OK. So now we've done that, we're going to want to find a suitable terminal to duplicate. And our best bet is to do one that doesn't have any kind of, you know, un door unlock functionality or any scripting functionality already attached to it. So I think the Vault 111 recreational terminal will do us just fine here Um, as we can see it's got a model and if, so if we double click on it uh, it looks like this I'm just gonna uncheck holds holotape so we can get rid of that because uh, I left that on in my test and it you know, didn't make a difference but it looks neat if we don't have it so I'm just gonna call it tutorial terminal and I'm gonna leave the everything else as it is because it doesn't matter for the purpose of this tutorial and I'm gonna delete the already existing uh, entries and I'm just going to hit OK, which is, there we go, tutorial terminal, and we're going to go back into the thing now. And so we're going to right click and create a new item text, and this will be the button the player presses to enter the, enter the uh, thingy. And so I'm going to do, put unlock door, and I'll have the response text there display unlocking dot dot dot. And now we're going to put a papyrus fragment here. So we're going to create a new property. And we're going to add a property. And we're going to want to look for an object reference. And we can call it basically whatever we want. I'm just going to call it our door. And hit OK. And this, because, you know, it doesn't. I didn't give it the same thing as our door. It won't put it automatically. So if I double click on it, this comes up. And I'm going to pick reference in render window. And double click on the door we put in the world earlier. And there we go, we can see it's selected Abernathy Farm, our door F. And I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm just going to double check that save for property, because when I did it, yep. When I did this in the test, my property got deleted somehow, and my script didn't work. So now we're going to put in our door, which is the name of a property we created, uh, pointing to our door, dot unlock, open bracket, close brackets. And if we compile, nothing will happen. Yep, that's good, that means it's worked. And, um,. Now I'm going to put in, if you want your door to open automatically when you press this, include this line. If you don't want to, your door to open automatically, don't include this line. So we're going to go for the name of our property again. And I'm going to put dot set open brackets true. And I'm going to compile. So this little set open line is the equivalent of, in the uh, old Gex, it would be, you'd put set open state 1. And that would mean that yes, it was open, or set open state 0, which means no, it's closed. So set open true means that yes, it's open. So we're triggering our door to automatically open at the same time. And now we're going to hit OK. And hopefully that will just work. Yeah. So when I did this in the test, uh, somehow my script just got deleted. And uh, so it didn't, it, uh, an error came up at that point, but it seems to be all fine. So now we just got to click and drag our terminal into the world. And we can place this basically anywhere. Uh, you can put it somewhere suitable. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put it floating in the air and save. And that's about all you need to do to handle doors. So I'm just going to go into the game now and demonstrate that working. So here I am in the game, and here's our door. Terminal only. Gotta find the terminal. Terminal's got this locked. And so now we're going to go to the terminal, which I didn't bother changing the name of. It's still called Recreation Terminal. And unlock door. Now you can hear it unlocking there. So we hit tab, we drop back out of there. And here we go. And now we can open and close it at will. I'm 
this won't do anything. If we do it a second time, it won't do anything. But we could, um, we could add another one which had lock. And if we did um, our property dot um, dot lock open brackets close brackets, and then we do our property dot set open brackets false, that would probably uh, that would probably lock the door again. But because I set this to respawns as well, I didn't uncheck the respawns box. Then it will it'll automatically lock after a couple of days anyway. I think. So anyway, only a short one today, but hopefully that was useful and clear. Thank you for watching and goodbye.